Well, in uh, 2015, you actually dropped your own low-life clothing brand. Uh, and you worked with uh, Willie Esco, yep. who was originally with Coogee. Coo mm-hmm. How did that do? I mean, you know, they, they hollered at me. They looked me up. They saw what I was doing. And they just wanted to take it a step further. So we connected and made it happen, man. Yep. Is it still around? Yeah. It's still going on right now. Nice. Nice. And then uh, in 2018, uh, Ralph Lauren actually hired you to be a model when they brought back the Snow Beach polo line. That was crazy. Yeah, how did that feel to really be I mean, hired by polo? I, I'll be honest, at first it didn't feel real. It's like, you know, everybody's looking at me like, even the makeup artists in the room are like, you're really here. You know, I'm like, wow, I'm really here. This is really happening. Like, this was history. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at it from that perspective, not just, you know, I'm getting a bunch of clothes and I'm looking at like, this is history right now. This is almost unbelievable, you know, but it was a, it was a good time. I got shout out my good friend, Tom Gould, man, because he co he co um, authored the book with me to bury me with the low on. And um, through that venture, he also got hired by Polo to shoot a lot of their campaigns and things like that. So, you know, Tom was always uh, one helping to connect the dots to bring it all together. So, you know, and that's the case of the snow beach shoot and everything as well, you know? Right, because I just looked up how much a snow beach uh, pullover, you know, cost these days. You know, there's one on StockX for 2,500. That just uh, goes to show. That's cheap, that's cheap because- um, That's cheap. That's cheap because before Ralph Lauren did reissues, like, you know, my book inspired them to go back into their vaults and retro things. They never did retro in their entire existence. But after my book came out, you know, they did the snow beaches over. Before that, before they made retro snow beach, snow beaches could go to $10,000. So when they mm. brought them back, it killed the price of all the vintage guys getting 5,000 for a snow beach. Cause now Ralph had them back in the stores for you know, just a couple of hundred. But if you collected them, give it a little while, they're gonna be back up to five, ten thousand dollars I mean, what's the significance of snow beach? And do you even know why that name is what it is? Nah, I don't have a clue. I mean, that was the year I was locked up when a lot of that stuff was coming out. I mean, R Raekwon helped make that Snow Beach popular as well, you know? So right. they call it the Raekwon at this point, you know? So I yeah, salute I mean, him wore, for that. He wore that uh, on the inside cover of his album or, or something uh, he like that? Wore, he wore it in the video of, uh, uh -huh. I think it was the Can It All Be So Simple or the Cream, one of those two. Right, right. Because I remember when he came out, I'm like, oh, I've definitely seen this before. Like, this is this is definitely something that's been around. Yeah, and Ray yeah, Kwan we, did, we, did put we that consider Ray Kwan an honorary low life. I mean, he lives it. <laughs> you know what I mean? His style was always like that, the way we do it. The same way we looked at Wu, like Wu, the Wu music was us. You know what I mean? Even though I wasn't into music or doing any anything, I think I decided to do music because of Wu. Because now I finally, I felt like I was hearing myself when I heard Wu. You know, everything they spoke of was everything we was living. You know, so it made the perfect sense. So they definitely inspired Low Life's heavy on that music tip. Right, and you and Old Dirty Bastard actually had a relationship for a while. Yeah, me and Dirty was cool. Cool, Fool was, Dirty was more cool with Master Fool, my rhyme partner. So mm -hmm. they was like, the same person and it was kind of insane to be around these dudes at the same time you know because they was the same you know i think i used to see dirty call master fool the craziest motherfucker he ever met so if you hear old dirty saying that about somebody but fool was exactly like that he was a fucking a wild animal man what's the craziest thing you saw old dirty bastard do I mean, I seen the motherfucker one time. I don't know if this is crazy. I was I was at a concert at the Palladium, and there was a group performing, and I'm standing by the door. I was hanging out with Special Ed that night. We just chilling, and Old Dirty runs in the door. Shoo! Runs right by us, runs straight to the stage, 
And then he snatches the mic from the performers while they was on stage performing. And you seen them get really uncomfortable but not say anything. And he took over the show. He flipped it out, threw the mic down, and choom, ran right out of the door again. He didn't stay. He didn't chill. He didn't do shit. He just broke the fuck out. Yeah, you know, when I interviewed uh, Capadonna, he said the exact same story, but... ODB did it with Biggie, actually. Wow. He said he ran up on stage, grabbed Biggie's mic, and he said Biggie kind of became his hype man. He said Biggie was actually with it. it was like, oh, yeah, nah, okay. That's hot. Yeah, that's hot. That's hot, though. Yeah. I mean, it's dirty. Who win the shit? Here, take the mic, nigga. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the hype man, too, you know? But dirty was crazy, man. But fool, you know, just just them two together, They they, like I said, they was the same person to me. They both was the most kind-hearted people you could know, but the craziest motherfuckers you could imagine. Yeah, man. Uh, rest in peace, old dirty bastard. I never got to meet him, but I was such a big fan. Yeah, me too, man. You know? 